You're listening to Menopause Natural Solutions, Episode 8, Perimenopause. Welcome to Menopause Natural Solutions, your podcast for all things perimenopause and menopause related. Stay tuned as naturopath Jennifer Harrington explains how to use natural therapies to transform your health and happiness. Today we're going to be discussing perimenopause. But before I get started, I wanted to share one of my favorite quotes by Dr. Sandra Thompson. She states, if menopausal symptoms were due solely to hormonal changes, then the menopausal experience would be more homogenous. What she's saying is that all women will stop menstruating and their production of hormones will reduce, but not all women will be symptomatic. If lower hormones were the problem, wouldn't all women struggle? Think of a metaphorical gun. If the lower hormone levels loaded the gun, what pulls the trigger? It's what you have done over your lifetime that will determine your severity of symptoms and act as a trigger for the metaphorical gun. So ask yourself, have you lived a stressed out life? Have you lived off fast foods? drunk a little too much, or smoked? Have you been exposed to toxic substances such as metals or chemicals or even radiation? Are you living a sedentary life? Do you have any lingering infections? Certain viruses like Epstein-Barr and Cytolomegalo can stay in your body for life and they flare up from time to time causing problems. But before you run away in distress... Remember, today is a new day. Diets can be improved, toxins removed, exercise programs started. There really is no better time than now to make changes and set yourself up for a more successful transition. Menopause is classified as the end of your periods. It's officially 12 months after your last period. The average age for menopause is 51. After this is postmenopause. Postmenopause is not a time of no reproductive hormones. It's a time of reduced hormone production. Other parts of your body, like your adrenal glands, will pick up the slack but not take over its production. Perimenopause, which we are going to focus on today, is the transitional phase before menopause. It can start as early as 10 years prior to menopause. Women as early as their mid-30s can start to feel the change in their hormonal status. These symptoms can get incrementally worse the closer to menopause they get. Word of, of advice, ladies, is not to try to wait it out. 10 years of perimenopause, one year of waiting for the last period, and then it takes most women two years post-menopause to stop the symptoms. That's 13 years. That is too long to wait it out. The quicker you take action, the easier it is to see the results. In the early stages of perimenopause, your ovaries reduce the frequency of ovulation. You may still menstruate, but the frequency, duration and quality of blood can change. Nothing about your cycle is predictable anymore and mid-cycle spotting is common. Some women start to experience very heavy bleeds, others very light bleeds, some cycles are short and others are very long. If you didn't ovulate this month, the production of progesterone in the second half of your cycle won't be there. Your estrogen levels might not have changed, but your ratio between the amount of estrogen you have compared to the amount of progesterone you have is imbalanced. This is often referred to as having a relative estrogen dominance. Unopposed estrogen is a growth hormone, and some women struggle with reproductive growths at this stage. 
Symptoms of estrogen dominance in perimenopause also include having a low libido, swollen breasts, feeling bloated, having headaches, feeling nauseous, having mood swings, being fatigued, feeling depressed or anxious, gaining weight, brain fog, insomnia, and growths like fibroids, endometriosis, PCOS, and reproductive cancers. It is estimated 60% of all women in perimenopause have fibroids. The good news is that they usually self-resolve, but for a small group of women, they become so problematic that they require surgical removal. Anemia with heavy periods is common, and iron supplementation or infusions may be advisable. There are many herbal medicines that act as uterine astringents that can reduce blood flow. These herbal medicines include yarrow, lady's mantle, shepherd's purse or swarvine. As the underlying cause of fibroid growth at this stage is often estrogen dominance, we can use estrogen modulating strategies here. Consider your weight. Excess fat or adipose tissue can contribute to the circulating pool of estrogens and increase estrogen dominance. You need to avoid xenoestrogens. These endocrine disruptors are found in unfiltered water, commercial food, plastics, personal care products, beauty products. You really need to swap to organic and chemical-free products and food. You need to increase your consumption of sulforaphane containing foods. These include broccoli, kale, Brussels sprouts, bok choy, collard greens, cauliflower and cabbage. Fruits from the Brassier family also contain indole 3 carbonyl and this helps to detoxify excess estrogens. Both sulforaphane and indole 3 carbonyl can be useful supplements at this stage. Tip of the week is exercise. Exercise is essential at every stage of life and perimenopause, menopause is no exception. Look at your current level of activity and see if it needs improving. I know that for some of you I'm preaching to the converted And if this is you, well done and keep up the hard work. If this isn't you, you need to start where you are. I have often seen recruiting a friend or family member to join in and help keep you accountable is a really good starting place. Book in days and times to get started. This may start as a walk around the block and later on extend to a full day hiking in nature. Ideally, you need to do a combination of weights and cardio. It may be easiest to hire a personal trainer to customise a program for you, get you started and keep you accountable. Exercise physiologists are a better bet if you have injuries or special needs. One of the most important aspects of exercise is fun. This is something you need to do regularly, so find something you enjoy. Personally, I have found that if you find the right group, they will motivate you to keep coming back. Some of my favorite ways to exercise include walking, jogging or hiking. Water sports such as swimming, kayaking, water polo, surfing. Cycling or spin classes. Boot camp or crossfit. But this isn't for the lighthearted. Dancing of all kinds. I'm actually about to start salsa classes and I can't wait. Yoga, Pilates, Tai Chi, maybe martial arts or team sports such as tennis, soccer or netball. The benefits of movement include being one of the very best stress management tools available. It also balances out and lifts moods, regulates blood sugar levels As the more muscle mass you have, the more insulin receptors you have, which means your body can better handle sugar. It can improve your physical appearance. It helps build and maintain muscle mass, 
It also strengthens ligaments and cartilage and and muscles. It improves cognitive function. Exercise produces BDNF, which is brain-derived neurotrophic factor. BDNF actually grows new brain cells. It improves cardiac health by strengthening the muscles of your heart, improving elasticity of blood vessels, increasing heart rate and blood volume. It helps with long-term energy production. Your lungs also get a workout as more oxygen floods your body. It reduces your risk of developing cancer as cancer hates lactic acid. Exercise can help delay the appearance of aging skin. (laughs) Did that get your attention? Exercise can help improve the quality and the quantity of your sleep. It can reduce your perception of pain and increase your tolerance to pain. Finally, it can spice up your sex life. There is no pill that can do all of that, and it can be free depending on what kind of exercise you choose. In general, you need to move every day, but you don't need to work out every day. Have you heard that sitting is the new smoking? The general recommendation is two and a half hours of exercise a week. How much do you do? Have you heard of the estrobolome? This collection of microbes are found in the microbiome of the digestive system and they are capable of metabolizing estrogens. This means a healthy gut microbiome will remove excess estrogens, but an unhealthy one will increase the amount of beta-glucadonorase, which activates or increases the amount of available estrogen circulating in your body. Therefore, optimal digestive function with a good microbiome is needed for a healthy hormone profile. Consider whether probiotic therapy may be useful for you. Additional estrogen modulating supplements include diindomethane, or DIM for short, liver detoxifying herbs like St. Mary's thistle or dandelion, antioxidants like alpha-lipoic acid, anti-inflammatory agents like omega-3s, and your B vitamins. Okay, quick recap. First changes in perimenopause are related to the reduced frequency of ovulation, causing a relative estrogen dominance due to the lack of progesterone. This affects women differently. Some will have heavier periods, Others lighter periods, but having a higher ratio of estrogen to progesterone can increase your chances of growing fibroids. What you need to focus on here is weight optimization, exercise, great digestive health, iron therapy and blood loss reduction if required. Key supplements include probiotics, sulforaphane, indole-3-carbonyl, DIM. If this is where you are at at the moment and you need a hand getting on top of your heavy bleeds, consider booking a one-on-one consultation with myself to fast track your results. See you next week. Thank you for listening to Menopause Natural Solutions. If you have enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe, share and a review. This podcast contains general information about menopause. It is provided as a guide and is not intended to replace medical advice.